Okay everybody, today I got a video on DMX lighting and the reason why I'm doing one on DMX lighting is I did some videos a while back on professional sound, pro sound and getting started getting started out and uh, I got great response back. Actually out of all the videos I've made on YouTube I've got the most response back from my pro sound videos. Everybody appreciates it. I got tons of emails and people thanking me for creating those videos. So. A couple years ago, when I wanted to switch from my standard incandescent lighting to uh, DMX LED lighting, I had a terrible time. I, I bought a lot of stuff that uh, I didn't need, and some I bought the wrong type of controller in that, and I couldn't find just simple information on what to buy and how to set it up and stuff like that. So I'm going to do two videos. This is going to be the first video and this is just going to go over what you need to get started with DMX lighting and what you need for a basic setup and how to go about purchasing. And then I'm going to do a second video on how to actually set everything up and how to get started on it. So if you've never bought any lighting or you don't even know where to start, this is a great video. If you already have the lighting and you just don't know how to get it working, you'll probably want to go to the second video. So what I'm going to do is go through each uh, part you need and explain each one. So the first thing you need is you need a fixture and this right here is a Chave Swarm 4. This is an LED and uh, it does a lot of different type of uh, functions but that's not important for the video. The main thing that's important for the video is just any fixture will do to start with. Whether you would go with a just a, a wash like a pan, uh, par light, like a par, slim par, 56 par, whatever, or if you're going to go with like a, uh, you know, a scanner or a multi-effect like this, it doesn't really matter, but you start with a, a, um, a DMX fixture. Now, just because it's LED doesn't mean it's DMX. You want to make sure whatever fixture you get actually is DMX, and it will tell you how many channels, whether it's three channels, six eight channels however many channels and each channel does a different uh, it does a different function so and uh, so you want to make sure when you buy a light you want to buy a LED I, I don't even know it, it, it's hard to even find incandescent lighting anymore because it's hot has duty cycles it takes a lot of power they're bigger so you want to make sure it's LED um, you want to make sure it has DMX because a lot are not DMX. A lot will just run on their own whether it's by noise or if you just set a different function. And then once you get it, uh, you'll go in the book, you'll look in the manual, and each channel will do different functions. And how DMX works is basically you set the light up to how you want and then you save that scene and then you create chases from those scenes so say in your first scene you have two of these and these you, you start out you, that's all you have is two swarms well what you do is you go on the controller and you say well channel one might control the color so you pick out of say 256 settings on that first DMX channel you could slide it up and down say you pick 128 and that's blue so now this is blue so you could go to the second swarm and go on the first channel of that fixture and say you change it to 68 and that's green or something and I'm just giving you random examples but and then say channel 2 for this one would choose if it would blink like a strobe effect which I don't think that is channel 2 on here but it's been a while since I programmed this one. I don't remember memorize all the channels. But just to give you an example, what you do is you get both lights and they're independent. Each DMX light will be independent unless you give them the same channel. And I'll go through more of that when you, we do the actual setup. But you'll set each one to exactly what type of function you want it to have and then you save those. So that's just a basic on how the fixture works. So the first thing you need when you're buying a DMX setting, a DMX setup, is you need an LED DMX fixtures. And like I said, whether it be a PAR, whether it be a scanner, a scanner is one of the ones with the mirror that it moves a goby around and uh, moves a, a spotlight around. Or if you get something like this, is what you're more of like a multi effect, a multi effects in that. So you got the fixtures or fixture, whatever, however many you start out with. So you got, you know, one, two, three, 
most uh, controllers will control like 6, 8, 12. <clears throat> Next thing you need is the cables. Now, these cables are slightly different than your standard microphone cables. They're an XLR. They're three prong, three connection XLR, just like just like your microphone cables. Microphone cables will work. Um, they they say these are better to use. They're more reliable. They're I guess they 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 handle a slightly different signal. But um, to be honest with you, I don't I don't know. I got these off Amazon f fairly cheap, and. Uh, so I didn't really play with microphone cables, but if you have a ton of microphone cables, you could probably give it a try. I don't, I don't, you know, just being in a computer background, but not being, a, you know, an expert in uh, DMX cables, I, I would assume, you know, the three cables are shielded, just like a microphone cable is shielded, and it basically is a copper cable. This is a 22 gauge, and they connect from one side to another. So what would make these that much different? I would have no idea. I would assume any kind of shielded microphone cable would work just fine. Next thing is a terminator. Now again, if you're uh, in an IT background, you remember SCSI cables terminating in that. Now here's the thing with the terminator on a DMX lighting setup is you don't necessarily need one and there's a certain amount of feet I think it's 92 feet or something like that if you have all your cable is longer than 92 feet you need to have a terminator while you're supposed to I, my setup works without one I use it anyways it just basically gives uh, the board something to bounce off of and the signal just doesn't go on forever and uh, what happens it seems like I've had it happen one time when I couldn't find a terminator I set everything up it seemed like the lights got out of sync like I had eight uh, par cans DMX and it seemed like um, they all kinda didn't flash at the right time and that with the terminator I've never had any trouble at all so I would buy one they're they're fairly inexpensive you get them off the internet I'm sure if you buy them at a local store they're probably a lot but off the internet I, they're like ten bucks five bucks so I, I would buy one uh, so Basically, you need a fixture. The you need the DMX, or yeah, I guess you could try my cables. But I would just buy the DMX cables for the price of the setup. These cables, I think I got them off uh, Amazon for like five bucks a piece. And uh, you need a Terminator. And then lastly, and probably the most complicated part of the entire thing, is you need a controller. Now this is basically for beginners this is probably the standard I know a lot of people use these these are great controllers to start out with they're actually made by Alation but resold by um, American DJ and it's the DMX operator the 192 and this is a fantastic simple controller to start with and they have a lot in that series they have the pro and they have uh, they have uh, one that now it does more fixtures now when you're p buying a controller Here's where one of the things I got messed up with. The first controller I got was a 50 channel large, you know, it was like a big designer controller. And I thought that would be better. But here, here's here's how these work. And you got to understand how it works to understand what kind of controller you want. This controller groups DMX channels by fixtures. So it will allot so many channels per fixture so if I click on one here for this say this would be fixture one I can just control this fixture get it to where I want it so again with these channels each one will do something different so I pull it up here say that's red or whatever it would be this would be strobe effect and this would move so it would be red strobe and it's moving so I get that and that's fixture one and I save fixture one now I click off that and go to two and then now I got, I, I got to adjust all these again. And what this is, is, is it, D, American DJ considers this an uh, intelligent fixture controller. As opposed to, if you ever look at a large dimming DMX controller, it have like 50 channels. Now, the difference between that is, this you don't have direct access at all times to all the channels on your lights. This is made to set up, this handles 12 fixtures, set those 12 fixtures up the way you want them, and then change scenes and chases, not on a live setting control the individual lights. So, 
here's why you would want a different type of controller in some situations, but probably you wouldn't want to, but this is why they make the other type. So the other type of controller is you have maybe 50 of these sliders, and each one represents a DMX channel. Now here's the problem is you only have 50 DMX channels. So say this fixture takes up, say, eight. Well, now you can't have very many fixtures because each one's taken up eight, and you only have 50 to start with. So, you know, say just for easy numbers, this takes up 10, well you have 50, you can only have 5 fixtures, but you have access to each one all the time. Now why would you want that? Well, say in a different situation where you have PARs, where you only want to control the brightness, and that's it. Now, you can control those, and you can slide them up and down, and so say you you want to fade in this type this side of the stage live you know you're live you're controlling them you could say okay I want to fade in this and this I want to fade this in okay now bring this down so you could you could have complete control over all your DMX channels and at all times so that's very beneficial if you're doing a big light show where you need to fade in and out lights and not have anything programmed so that's where those designers come in where it is, is you have everything programmed ahead of time, and you just basically just hit a scene or a chase, and a chase will just go through the scenes, and you're, you're good to go. And this is what you'll want for like a DJ or for, a, you know, a live band, not like a concert, like a stadium concert, but for a local live band. So you can get up there on stage. Say you have eight, say just in a band setting, you have eight par DMX lights, you have your you have eight scenes um, programmed. That's all you've done so far, and you made those eight scenes chase one. Well, say one's all red, all blue, all green. Say this is flashing red and green or whatever. So now you can just go up and say, okay, this this uh, set this song's going to be all red. It's going to be blue. This is going to be a mixture. This is going to be flashing. So they all, you don't have control of the individual lights at that time, the fixtures, but they're all programmed and ready to go in scenes. And then you can hit the chase button, and it goes from one to two to three. So it goes all red, all green, all blue. So that's where these controllers would go in. And this is a really probably if you're a mobile DJ or you're a uh, band, this is the kind of setup you're going to want. You're going to want to program everything at home, take it out, and then basically just hit a scene. So, just to recap, you're getting ready to purchase your first DMX lighting setup, or you, you want to understand how to get started. You're going to need your fixture, you're going to need your cable, and you're going to need your controller, and chances are you're better off to get a Terminator. It's a certain uh, length of... Uh, cable but you're just safer to get this and you put it this in the last fixture and that's basically how you start with the DMX lighting setup if you have any questions let me know again this is why I'm doing these pro sound ones because I got such good feedback and it seems like it really helps out a lot of people I was a musician you know I'm, I am a musician and I'm a, I'm a DJ and uh, uh, it, it's really hard to find some of this information and this is a big purchase I hopefully this video now you understand what you need because I couldn't find a video like this two years ago when I was starting so I'm gonna make a second video here on how to actually get this stuff set up and how to get started on programming